Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. For today's episode, we will be dealing with a question that was sent to us by one of our listeners. The question, which I have shortened for time's sake, reads as follows. Dear Pilgrim, where does God dwell today? Acts 17.24 says, The God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. So, Pilgrim, during man's physical existence, where should man go to find the living God? Should he look in buildings made by man, or should he seek the spiritual in a more spiritual place? God tells us in the Bible exactly how, when, and where his spirit can be appropriated. Pilgrim, God's spirit dwells within his word and not in buildings made by human hands. However, God's spirit will cohabit with your personal spirit in your heart if you invite him in. We invite God's spirit through repentance and obedience to his word by submitting to adult full, adult, full immersion baptism. See Acts 2 verse 38. There are many things in that response that I do agree with. First of all, when the questioner asks, where does God dwell? Does he dwell in temples made with hands? The answer is, no, he doesn't. In Acts 17 verses 22 to 25, we find that Paul was standing on Mars Hill in Athens, and he was teaching the Greek philosophers. In Acts 17 verse 22 we read, Then Paul stood in the middle of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him I declare unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he gives to all life and breath and all things. Here, the Greeks on Mars Hill and in Athens itself had set up idols to everything, and they had set up temples to these gods. We read, that, we read of many of these gods in Greek mythology today. He taught them that the true God, though, does not dwell in these temples, or for that matter, in any man-made temple. Nor is the true God worshipped with men's hands through the making of idols. The reason is that these idols are made with the physical things that were created by God. God has always been against idol worship. In Exodus chapter uh, 20, Exodus chapter 20, uh, in verse 4, we read, You shall not make unto thee any graven image, image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. This prohibition is carried forward to the New Testament. In 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, we read at verse 21, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So the question is, where does God dwell? Well, the, teach, the scriptures teach that God dwells in heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, as part of uh, Jesus' sample prayer that he was teaching his disciples, he said, After this manner, therefore pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The Father is in heaven, but so is the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. In 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, uh, we're going to read verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. The Father, the Word, which John 1, 1 says is God, and if we go down to verse 14, we find it was Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, these three are one. Heaven is God's home not this earth. In a spiritual sense, though, God dwells in the hearts of his followers, ones who are faithful Christians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, at verse 16, we read, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. This indwelling isn't like some people believe, meaning that God, usually the Holy Spirit, takes over our life. It occurs through believing and obeying His Word. 
It occurs by following God. In 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17, we read, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, truly furnished unto all good works. If we want God to dwell with us, we need to dwell with him. We need to follow his word. If we obey God, he dwells in our hearts. But that's only if we believe and obey him. What do the scriptures teach we need to do to believe and obey him? It's not just uh, through repentance, but it is through belief. It is through repentance. Romans uh, 10 verses 9 and 10 says we need to confess Jesus Christ. Uh, and Mark 16, 16, Acts 2, 38 and other verses would teach that we need to be baptized for the remission of our sins. But that's not the end either. We need to continue living a godly life. In Revelation chapter 2, uh, we read at verse 10, Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be you faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Christians must be faithful unto death. God will only dwell with us if we are faithful. He will not dwell with us if we are in sin. So the answer is, where does God dwell? He dwells in heaven. He dwells in heaven. That's where he lives. He is not here dwelling on earth in temples made with hands. He is not dwelling in the building in which we go to worship services in. He doesn't live there. He dwells in heaven. And in a spiritual sense, he dwells in our heart if we obey him. If you are not a Christian, the brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you would like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode. Searching the Scriptures has been brought to you by the East End Church of Christ, which meets at 3601 Victoria Park Avenue, Suite 200, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Our hours of service are Sunday at 10 a.m. for Bible study and 11 a.m. for morning worship, as well as Wednesday at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study. If you have any Bible questions that you would like to have answered during this podcast, you may email them to Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. That's Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Finally, if you'd like to catch up on any episode that you missed, you will find them at www.eastendchurch.org under the podcast tab found on the main page. I hope you have found the few minutes that we spent together today useful in expanding your knowledge of what the Bible teaches. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the, in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Until you listen again, keep searching the scriptures to learn what God wants you to do. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.